All right, so we got a video with Mr. Mill Spec Mojo. He's running this drill here. He goes through some pistol transition, malfunction. It's all good, right? It's just using this as a visual aid for you, the average guy that might be watching videos on YouTube, trying to learn to become the better shooter. Where's my background on this information coming from? I train with John McPhee and this is what I've learned through taking classes with him. So these are techniques that are gonna help you become a faster, more efficient shooter. And we're just using uh, guys on the YouTubes as a visual aid. All right, let's talk about the, uh, the shooting technique. It's very popular. You know, it's like the shock absorber thing. And uh, I see a lot of people using this because it's kind of like the fad. Now, can you be good with this? Yes. Uh, you know, you have a lot of grandmaster shooters, competition shooters, etc. They've done this enough times where they've got the gun in the right place and it's aligned properly. However, the average shooter, the average guy that watches videos or has minimal level training that tries this is not going to be as successful. Why? Two things. The gun is going to move a lot and also the alignment with the eye, mainly the alignment with the eye, right? So I've drawn a blue line here and based on his repetitions, he's got the, got the gun up in the right place, right? It's level with the eye line. So that's the goal is to bring the eyes and the sights to the same level. Generally when people do this is they either outright look over the sights, right? Or what happens is they'll cant the gun upwards, bring the front sight up to the eye, and then they'll end up shooting high shots. Up close, won't see a difference. You get further out, you're gonna start shooting uh, above the target or above the uh, point of uh, area of point of impact that you that you're wanting, right? How can we make this work for the non grandmasters, the non competition shooters who have thousands of reps to make this work, and they've worked out the little kinks here. So, the average Joe, the average YouTuber, the person that has no training, the person that just watches videos and tries to replicate. How does this work for you, right? Because this is what all these videos are based on. The technique for this is to bring the shoulders up and forth, right? locking out the arms. Then we're driving the head down. What does this do exactly? So what we're trying to do with that is generally with the gun being low, right? We're trying to get it on this plane where do you see the blue line. If you can bring the shoulders up, it'll bring the gun up, the head down, the head down brings it down to in line with the sights. You don't have to think about this because for the average person, this is inconsistent. You'll never have the gun in the same place twice. It's always gonna move around. Using your bone structure and your body geometry, you create that, that elevation, that one plane of elevation for your sights and your eyes. And if you're doing your job from left to right, your shoulders are squared, your arms are in that isosceles triangle, you'll have that left and right windage uh, also dialed in, right? But we're looking at this simply from an elevation standpoint. Bringing the gun up to the eye, eye down to the gun, we meet on the same plane instead of having kind of like this floating thing of where my gun is here, my eyes are here, and we're trying to get them together and shoot accurately, it ain't gonna happen. Can you do it? Yes, but you have to put time and effort and work out those kinks. But, you know, most of the guys that shoot guns aren't spending the time to get there, right? So, and it, it, just, it just is what it is, right? Everybody's in a certain level of skill, you know, whether they're beginning their journey or where they're kind of plateauing or whatever, right? And this is uh, based on that. Like how, how can you watch something on YouTube and take something from it to, to be better versus just outright trying to mimic someone, which you might not understand the nuances, right? So let's, uh, let's clear this and look at the shock absorber recoil thing, right? Why this doesn't always work, right? It's inconsistent, right? So we say, oh, the elbows and shoulders take the shock. But if we see here, right, we're gonna we're gonna watch the wrists, the elbows, the head, and the body, right? And so the shock wave hits the hands first, hits the elbows. You know, it's like, oh, it absorbs recoil. But you see that he's getting pushed back an inch, and now he either stays there, pushed back, or he's going to move forward and here he's just taking each shot is pushing him back an inch more at a time right 
generally what happens is when people try to fight the recoil, they're getting pushed back, they lean forwards or push forwards, and they'll have this oscillation of where their brain is trying to correct the fact that their body is moving, right? You'll end up having kind of these tall groups on the target. It's like an up and down. So if you see like an up and down vertical line in your shot group, that's simply because you have uh, stance issues, which is you're getting pushed back by the gun. How, how can we fix this? Uh, first of all, um, having the stance in the right place is about the hips over the lead foot, head past the lead foot. If you're a, a lighter weight or smaller guy, right, this is way more important than your big guys or, you know, even your smaller stocker guys who have a good lower center of gravity. Uh, you want to just a forward lean, right? So all he could do is just get on his knees a little bit more, drive the hips forward, shoulders forward, head forward. You have a more vertical lean. Instead of being kind of like more up and down like he is, you're just a, a, a nice more forward lean. Gives you that little bit extra leverage from being pushed around uh, with the gun, right? So as far as this is concerned, if you do what I mentioned before, which is having the arms locked out for natural bone support, the head pushed forward, shoulders locked forward. What you also want to do is drive, what you want to do is drive the, the right arm into the back of the gun, right? Positive forward pressure, the left hand pulls, right? And also you're focusing on your grip with your hands, right? Your grip, how much, how much percent of power, right? 40, 60, 30, 70, whatever, it's 100 to 100, right? You want to make sure you both hands are gripping the gun as tight as possible. Grip it till you start shaking a little bit and then back off a little bit. That's the amount of power you want to do. I will say the focus of the grip pressure is in the back strap, pinching those palms together, right? That's going to give you a lot of the control.